Joey Flu group. It's been a while. Uh, it's pretty much been <laughs> most of this year. I think I can count the number of lives I've done in this group on one hand, on less than a hand. So, uh, yeah. Um, this is would typically be the video that I say Merry Christmas, Happy Christmas Eve, um, but I won't be doing that. Uh, yeah, and I'll, I'll explain. So, um, I just got off uh, watching uh, Teals, one of Teal Swan's video, yeah, the 1st of January each year. She does a prediction uh, for the year and I watched her 2020 prediction video. It only goes for 20 minutes. Um, I'll post the link. Hey Ray, beautiful woman. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and her prediction for this year was insanely accurate. So like she didn't talk about specifics, um, you know, um, but what she did is she talked about the themes that would come up for this year and it's insane how accurate she was <laughs> to the point oh I read one of the the comments to her video and I, I think I agree actually it's like I'm not buying my 2021 diary until I've watched her <laughs> prediction video for 2021 so this person's not going to make any plans until they've watched her next prediction video so oh, I'll be uh, with everyone else in anticipation uh, looking for what the themes are going to be for, for next year um, yeah so look I'm not going to say Merry Christmas I'm not going to say Happy New Year because um, the reality is, is that for many people across our globe, it's very far from that. Um, you know, for so many of us, we spent the majority of this year uh, in lockdown, in isolation. Um, sadly, many people are going to be doing that this Christmas and not being able to spend it with with the people that they want to um, and you know albeit Christmas to me doesn't um, I don't subscribe to a lot of the traditional <laughs> aspects of what Christmas is but for me it is very much you know getting to spend it with the people that I love and care about and I know uh, for that for many of us that isn't their reality this year and you know I guess what the message is around that is just wherever you're at, whatever you're feeling, whatever your scenario is, is that it's okay to not be feeling happy or merry uh, at this, this time of year under those conditions, right? Um, you know, I'm very grateful, <laughs> cross fingers. Um, Christmas Day, uh, we are having a quiet one that's deliberate um, and intentional, but if all goes to plan and nothing changes, then I do get to spend uh, a couple of days later with, with my loved ones, which I'm very excited to be doing. Um, and yeah, just in massive appreciation because for a big chunk of this year, that wasn't, uh, wasn't what we were allowed to do. Yeah, um, I put the title of this video and again, like you just, you know, always doing an end of year reflection. And uh, around this time last year, I set my intentions for 2020 um, and I've included that as the title. So radical self-acceptance, <laughs> relentless alignment and unthinkable compassion. And I have to laugh, you know, as the year in reflection, it's like, wow, be careful what you, what you wish for. Be careful what <laughs> intentions you set for the year. Because as much as, you know, it's all good to say, right, radical self-acceptance, you know, um, relentless alignment, um, unthinkable compassion, you know, they're big statements. And 
when you think about well what would be required to happen in someone's life to enforce those impose them you know um, well this year's conditions have forced a lot of those aspects um, like you know you talk about 10xing something well I'm going to say 2020 was the year that those items for me got a hundred X you know so <laughs> um, the, I can't remember what videos I have done this year because I have done quite a few in my waking women's collective group um, where um, so I'm kind of like what what have I shared with you guys personally this year and I know I know it's been a lot less so it's funny because I think I kicked off this year by changing the uh, the uh, the settings for this group from private to public um, so I could be more in alignment with sharing these aspects to to my my greater audience um, and then <laughs> And then, of course, 2020 happened and we had COVID and lockdowns and, you know, what one of the giant themes for this year that has been really unpleasant to sort of witness is this, you know, polarisation of, um, Teal talks about it in, in her prediction video, it was just this, you know, taking a stand and going well what is important to me and you know we're seeing this at all levels at individual levels at community level at government level um, you know race religion everything right um, and just what's made it really I guess sad and confronting is you know having this time to find alignment in ourselves without um, you know considering others because isolation that's what we get to do there's a beautiful reflection question that I've used in the past and that is who am I in the absence of others well 2020 you know gave that to me on a plate you know who am I when no one else is around okay and there was a lot of gifts and awareness that came to me in that okay and so with this whole aspect of people sharing their perspectives on politics on government on race issues okay is that unfortunately we live in a society where it's like you've got to make your stand you've got to you know pick your side of the fence right and therefore when you pick your side of the fence then when someone speaks their truth and they happen to be on the other side of the fence is that we get this condition where we've got well I'm I can't be wrong and if I'm not wrong and someone's polarizing my perspective they've got a an opposing view <laughs> then therefore they must be wrong and I must be right Okay, and unfortunately what we see um, then, particularly in the online space, is this whole disagreeing, okay, and not being able to ask self-reflecting questions and go, wow, such and such believes this, that's different to what I think. What would happen if I considered their perspective? Or ask them how people have come to their perspectives okay so um, as much as it was <laughs> like such a gift um, having this time to sit and reflect and ask a lot of questions um, I've been very reluctant to put myself into the public space sharing my particular perspectives um, seeing that we don't yet have a society that deals very well with people having opposing or differing views okay so that's that's been fascinating <laughs> concerning um, and I think 
for me personally, and I've spoken a lot to this uh, in my Waking Women's Collective group because it, it, it's, it's a, quite a protective container, uh, is, is how do we navigate, you know, friendships, relating um, when we do have those opposing views? And I think that's been interesting this year is for me personally working out how to do that um, and what I can say is it is definitely possible uh, there were at times when I was like you know realizing people that I care about having totally different views and per per perspectives on issues to myself and I'm like oh, how, how am I going to do those relationships moving forward um, but really just being able to sit with others knowing not not this concept of agreeing to disagree but really realizing that innately you know the people that I care about are still the people I care about regardless of their perspectives their beliefs okay people are not their opinion I think is probably the best way um, to summarize that for, for myself um, and yeah, I don't think this is by any way um, finished or wrapped up with the end of 2020. This is an ongoing exercise of deeper self-inquiry, deep, deeper learning of, you know, how can I be me um, around others particularly when we do have those oppositional views. Um, and what I love about this is like, it, it's, it's, this, it's this bigger reflection of, of, of how we do change, okay? So when there's something that we want that we're not getting, that's because there's some inner resistance or something. There's a big um, portion of ourselves, a big part of ourselves that actually doesn't want the thing that we want and what change requires us to do is actually sit down and really acknowledge that part that's perspective not force change but actually listen to that perspective and go well what is it what is it that you want what is it that you've been fighting for that clearly is winning that's why I haven't got the thing that I'm I'm wanting um, and so that whole idea of just being with the parts of my life, the people in my life that have opposing views and just being there and acknowledging them. Okay, again, that's another reflection for how we do change on a more global scale. Okay, and, you know, uh, again, I just can't help it, but referring back to Teal's um, prediction um, about what this year has been about and it's you know a lot of unpleasantness being thrown up you know the the dysfunctional aspects of our society our governments our um, the state of our planet as a whole um, has has been coming up and you know <laughs> you still might be able to argue or pretend that that's not going on but the you know the truth of our reality is that for the most part of us who are watching this video we're, we're all good you know generally we operate in um, a pretty high level of comfort um, however if we're to look at the dysfunction the cost of us having that is that you know a massive portion of our globe um, you know you only have to do a bit of research on hunger and poverty to find out what the cost is of us having having the lifestyles that we have okay whether we're open to considering that that dysfunction or not hmm. so <laughs> here I am we're at the end of 2020. Um, so a big part of this year um, for me and for a lot of us has been that deeper level of contemplation. 
Um, and I, that's an area I play at constantly anyway. But what happened with 2020 is that got like, as I said, a hundred X went d deeper than deeper, um, just through the environmental changes of all of a sudden being at home a lot more, not interacting with as many people, not having the socializing still as busy cause I, <laughs> picked up uh, some more work this year, uh, which I'm very grateful for. And it was um, <sighs> working with um, an amazing group uh, in the disability sector, um, a school leavers program. And um, that in itself was um, amazing. I learned a lot from those guys and it's really, I think enhanced my capacity as a human being uh, as well. So. Um, and, you know, the, the extra work, even though a lot of it, again, was done online as opposed to face-to-face, -face, uh, was still uh, of great benefit uh, to myself. So, yeah, um, from a business perspective, um, you know, I had all these grand plans, particularly when we did, you know, in March uh, here in Melbourne, uh, start to go into lockdowns and and whatnot is to you know get my joy recipe training program up and running you know I had a great big green screen background uh, on my wall set up ready to go for that and I very quickly had to reassess what I wanted to achieve this year from a business perspective um, and what became the gift um, that I sort of had to uh, surrender to was that this issue was going to be more about me applying my joy recipe again at that 10x level um, and self-care at that 10x level um, and what I'm grateful for in that is that you know I got to put um, was it pedal to the metal rubber to the road you know put put everything Put my strides in place uh, you know these things that I speak to in the joy recipe they work <laughs> and I already knew that uh, but what I got to sort of see and bring into fruition is is how they get applied when shit he is hitting the fan when you're not getting your way when you're you know things that you hold true into your life start to crumble okay when you're having a crisis of identity how does the joy recipe look in the in in that environment so uh so it wasn't so much about producing content doing lives um it was really much more about uh, applying the things that i train and hold dear to um putting them into practice it just a whole other deeper level um, and feeling that through you know um, I only do lives when I feel it you know I don't say right I'm gonna do a live every actually no take that back I used to I used to go right every Wednesday at 11 11 I'm gonna loot do a live and reflect on whatever is inspiring me on that day well, for a lot of 2020, I wasn't feeling inspired to do that on any Wednesday, <laughs> you know. Hence why uh, a, a lot of the content that I have shared uh, within the Joy Flu group uh, has been, you know, other other things that have inspired me um, that resonated in terms of sharing with the Joy Flu message. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, despite not doing a lot business-wise, um, I had some really cool opportunities and some really beautiful successes. Um, I started off the year with uh, a workshop that I did with a non-for-profit here in Melbourne called Traveller's Aid, and that was a values workshop that was really, really cool. Glad we squeezed that in while we got the opportunity. Um, because from that point onwards, things were very much online. So, 
Uh, it was a fabulous group put together by an Aussie guy up in Queensland called the Earth Elders, and I presented in that group early on the actual Joy Flu recipe. Um, I've made that video available on YouTube, um, and yeah, it's pretty potent, and it, it's got all the concepts in there that sort of... Um, yeah, as I said, that I, I got to apply this year. Um, I also spoke uh, at my beloved, beloved uh, World Domination Summit. So, of course, with everything being the way that it was, um, they had to postpone this year's summit that they run uh, in June, July in the American summer. Uh, but as a result, took things online and I applied to speak uh, to the online aspect of that and got the gig and it was just amazing because that place, um, that community just holds um, so much love <laughs> for, um, you know, just beautiful people all doing amazing things uh, in the world in terms of, you know, um, the values that uh, that community speaks to is community service. Um, which which is really really cool um what else oh i had a had an article that i wrote published in uh, fierce truth magazine um they've gone and changed their platform so now they've got an app um, that you can subscribe to their magazine which is a monthly uh, magazine and a dear friend of mine uh, is the creator of that subscription so please uh, check it out. Um, I think if you just go fiercetruths.com, um, you'll find the appropriate links to that. So that was cool. Uh, writing is something that I've sort of only dabbled little bits in, and so it was really good to put something together and uh, something that really resonated and I felt proud to, to have published with my name again. So... Oh, I'll keep working on my writing skills and hopefully do do a bit more there. Um, other than that, uh, I did do a video again in my, on my YouTube, um, and that was a, a pillars video for my Waking Women's Collective group. So, obviously, not being able to do face to face, we took everything online, um, and then consequently, as a result, we had uh, a few people. You, two two people jump online on one of our gatherings and try to sell some financial products to the group and I was like yeah they tried to hijack it was, it was really interesting so as a result I sort of had to you know tighten the rules around well what what is this waking women's gathering all about what what can we do what can't we do in in that group so I addressed that in a video as well uh yeah it was hilarious. Um, that group was um, a godsend for me during this year. Um, I haven't had, um, yeah, it was it was just perfect the way that um, group has travelled and the space that we've sort of created um, of just open, honest support. Um, and just honouring where we're at. Because, um, yeah, there was a few periods there where I didn't want to run that gathering, <laughs> but I had to show up and do it. And there was just the the space um, was the medicine that I needed uh, in that instance. And uh, those a lot of those women are in also in this group, so, and they're, um, yeah, I can't thank them enough. <laughs> For, for what we've collectively created in in that so uh, that continues on next year um, I always take January off I don't run it in January um, the change that we're making from uh, 2020 into 2021 is instead of being the first Wednesday of every month we're transitioning it to the first Tuesday of every month just to shake it up um, and do things different. So that's going to continue as an online uh, with some social face-to-face -face, uh, opportunities. So the actual Waking Women's Collective gatherings will continue to be online moving forward, 
first Tuesday of every month uh, with some optional face-to-face -face social get-togethers as well. Uh, just to mix it up a bit and be a bit different. Uh, the other cool thing that sort of uh, created itself in 2020 is uh, the full moon ceremonies uh, that I'm involved with, with two other incredible women. Um, and that's, yeah, it just kind of birthed itself. It was fun um, and continues to be fun. Uh, we're also taking January off um, and reconvening for the full first moon. I believe it's at the end of January. So. Um, I'll pop links to both of those uh, in this group if anyone's feeling the call uh, to either of those I'll be continuing on in 2021 <sighs> um, yeah so uh, with this whole just reflecting on you know who I am who I want to be in this world, who Joy Flew wants to be in this world, who Andrea Martel, Joy Scientist, wants to be in this world from a business perspective. Um, the nice thing is, is that um, this year has really gifted an opportunity to really um, go, as I said, deeper and fig figure that out. And it, it's ongoing. Um, I haven't quite got the answers to any of those questions just yet. Um, and I think what something that's really sort of resonated strongly that I wanted to share it's um, is that we don't owe anyone anything um, we live in a society that's very much built some interesting structures around obligation what we have to do, what we must, what we should do, yeah, and with a lot of things being made unavailable to us, particularly from a, from social obligation aspects this year, um, is that I've really come at th coming and looking at things through through new eyes um, about how I want to operate moving forward, and for me. As much as the lockdowns were great, um, I now choose to make myself unavailable um, to certain people and situations and obligations and the must, shoulds and have tos um, to only do what feels good and what's in service to myself so that I can therefore be of greater service to others to those that I want to be of service to, right? To what feels right. Um, and this is this is new ground, this is new territory. I'm not gonna say that it's easy, that it's come naturally. Um, when I say no to things, quite often it brings up a lot of guilt. <laughs> and then, you know, dealing with the inner dialogue of, oh, well, I should, I must, blah, blah, blah. You know, what's the story here? How do I feel about that? What's underneath that feeling? Yeah, so it's creating a lot of deeper processing uh, for myself as well. And so I'm still figuring out what that looks like. Yeah, as I said, I don't necessarily have the answers to that. Um, but I'm excited because, it's, you know, there's opportunities in figuring that out. Um, and there's a lot of learning and there's a lot of unlearning, you know, about ways that I've done things for the first 39 years of my life, right? It's like, well, I'm not sure I want to operate that way anymore. I'd like to do things differently. And so it's, it's figuring that out. And like any new skill, it's like, I don't always get it right the first time, or I may not get it right the first thousand times. Okay. But being really, uh, having unthinkable compassion <laughs> yeah um and finding that s radical self-acceptance and my uh relentless alignment so as i said the, those themes that i picked for myself um came and hit me in the face multiple times throughout the year and having to question well how do i cultivate those for myself and um, yeah it's been been incredible I wouldn't change it 
Okay, but it hasn't been fun. <laughs> it's not all been fun. Um, so yeah, my parting message, I guess, is going to again be around just, um, you know, it's okay wherever we're at. You know, if you're having a shitty Christmas, that's okay. Um, if you're just wanting to get to the 1st of January 2021, even though it's just a date, <laughs> another human construct, um, but if just getting to that means that you get to breathe um, a little deeper um, and feel like you've really accomplished something by just getting through 2020, then that's okay. Yeah, we don't. <laughs> I think for many of us having a t-shirt called I Survived 2020, um, I'm sure whoever's creating those will be bestseller. Um, and yeah, just what is it that I then have learnt in 2020 that I then want to bring into 2021, knowing that, you know, we've learnt that things can change rapidly, that our world can change in a heartbeat. You know, we're seeing this happen here in Australia at the moment. You know, one moment you're on a plane flying somewhere and then you're landing and finding out that you might have to self-isolate for two weeks and that wasn't the conditions um, when you jumped on that plane. Yeah, so, uh, or you might travel over a border and then discover that you can't get back. <sighs> and it, yeah, you know, it, it's not fun. So. You know, how, how can we be compassionate? How can we be flexible when we're living in a world with those sort of conditions that are becoming, I'm not even gonna say the new normal because I hate those words. <laughs> that term just really, really, really um, upsets me. Um, and so just honoring where we're at and also just being okay with the fact that we don't owe anybody anything and letting ourselves off the hook in terms of those obligations and all the things that we think we have to, must do, shoulds, um, and just honouring ourselves in the moment, just really tuning in, becoming our own authority about what is it that I need and want and actioning that without any guilt or shame around it, right? <sighs> So yeah, that's it. That's it from me for this year. Um, I may or may not be more present and available uh, next year. Only time will tell. Um, but as I said, just yeah, it's 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 been interesting, and it's going to continue to be interesting as um, as our human constructs and the way that we want to operate in this world um, gets examined at every level. Yeah, at that internal level, but also globally uh, as well as our human constructs uh, are all being uh, examined a, a lot more closer through different eyes, through um, through a different perspective, perhaps. So, on that note, as I said, not necessarily a Merry Christmas, but um, look, just hopefully. Um, we can find um, that spark of joy somewhere. If it's not joy, then, you know, well, what's something below that that isn't quite joy that I can find resonance with? You know, whether it's just admiring a beautiful flower um, or, you know, I'm just trying to think what's here. Or the way my laptop is shaped, you know and just find some admiration um, or awe in that moment that we can then look to hopefully build up to joy, even if we're not getting, um, getting our way right now or having the experiences that we necessarily want to be having. Um, yeah. So much love and gratitude um, with heart and soul. We'll see you on the other side of 2020 um, and take care.